Hey look, it's Titus, courtesy of the Angry Video Game Nerd. <laughs> <laughs> hey everybody, Klaus here. This is a, a no, this is um, a new series I have planned for quite a while. This is Let's Not Play, where I take objectively bad games and go over why they can be played. And maybe mock them a bit in the process. <laughs> anyway, for this first episode, I've got a guest with me. <laughs> yeah, butchered it. I was trying to do the Superman march, which is one of my favorite pieces of film music ever. And I hope you don't get copyright cited for that. But anyway, hello everyone. Golden Tails Geek here again from this Conquer video from, uh, from the other day. Yeah, this was meant to be recorded in place of that, but um, I couldn't find the splitters that I needed for it. But I found them, so we're good to go. Yay! Yay for technology working! Woo! Yay for not being Proton John! <laughs> yeah. Speaking of Proton John, I hope he continues doing his Let's Play of this game because I'm I the because I, I just it's been fascinating watching him play it, especially since I remember one time when I was in middle school, my best friend rented it for. Uh, to see how good it was, and he knew I was a big fan of Superman, so he had me over at the house when he was renting it, and uh, I was trying it out once, and I didn't know exactly what I was doing, so Lex Luthor was laughing a long way, you know, with the <laughs> noise, you know, and uh, my friend was in the bathroom at the time when, uh, uh, when I was playing around a bit, and he actually thought I was the one doing the laughing. <laughs> it was kind of weird, and I'm like, nope, that's the game laughing. Yeah. Unfor unfortunately, the uh, controllers that I'm having are having a little bit of issues, so I'm starting to get a Superman mode, but... Yeah. Well, you know, gotta do the best you can with the tech that's available, I suppose. Yeah. Anyway, let's get stuck into it. Ever watching Bane... Indeed. Ever since watching Bane 666 AU, I can't help but say, let's get stuck into it. Yeah, I getcha. There, there have been a few times when, in my videos, like, uh, I found, uh, particularly, like, in my Golden Sun Let's Play, where I've kind of accidentally emulated some of the catchphrases of H.C. Bailey, so... <laughs> and he's one of my inspirations as a Let's Player, so <laughs> it's probably why. Yeah. Hopefully that, um, if you're able to hear it over, um, Golden Tales Geek, there's that one line where Lex says, In short time, your fate will be sealed, Superman. Yeah, so. you have no chance to survive. Make your time. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, getting into what better way to show off Superman's capabilities than flying through rings or hula hoops? Because he's clearly a seven-year-old girl. <laughs> uh, actually, hula hoops were pretty big among boys when I was a kid. But what do I know? As well as girls. But what do I know? <laughs> now, I, I couldn't for your life do the hula hoop thing. Bigger than hula hoops. Um, no, wait. This is not the shop of horrors. Uh, okay, since I boxed that pretty badly, I might as well show what happens when you hit a gray ring. Yeah. Well, go on then. Yo, I, you outright failed the mission. Failure. <laughs> yeah, Lex wins. Yeah. Oh, wrong button. Oh well. Whoopsie. Don't worry, we'll start over from scratch, folks. No big deal. Yeah, it's only the first. Now I can say what I was going. Now I'm going to say what I was meaning to say. Engage chevrons. There we go. Because Superman <laughs> is basically a car. All you got to do is um, install a brake light, install turn signals, and install windshield wipers. Yeah. Of course, I was saying engage chevrons because the architecture of that place where. Um, where uh, Lex was uh, trying to send uh, Superman's friends to that virtual world was kind of a... Uh, oh yeah, the Chevron... Just, I don't know, it, just, it was giving me all kinds of Stargate vibes. And it's funny I mentioned Stargate because the, mov the movie that started the whole Stargate franchise you know, had Kurt Russell in it, and Star Kurt Russell uh, is going to be in the second Guardians of the Galaxy movie that's going to be coming out next month. Uh, Stargate was a pretty good movie, actually. What? Stargate was a pretty good... Stargate? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, it's one of the better Roland Elmerich movies. 
but yeah. Yeah, that's kind, of, that's kind of one thing that really sucks about this is like the whole flying control thing and how Superman kind of handles like a car. Yeah. And then another little funny little Marvel Cinematic Universe uh, connection between Stargate and uh, uh, Stargate, uh, uh, Stargate and well, the, the aforementioned franchise is that James Spader, who played Daniel Jackson in Stargate, also uh, did played Ultron in A Avengers: Age of Ultron. So, yeah. I'm a big movie nerd, so... I can tell. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I love movies, films... I, I've been a film score geek since I was a little kid, hence my little usage of the Superman March there and the earlier, earlier in the video, so... In fact, the Superman March, I would say, is ranks it, like, pretty highly in my top three favorite um, su uh, superhero themes. I, because... And I rank them based off of, like, the moment you hear them, you know that the instantly what hero they're for. That's kind of that my my criteria. The other two are, uh, are um, Danny Elfman's Batman theme from the 1989 Batman theme. You know, da -da 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 right. da and, you know, and for those paying attention, each of these um, ring stages are timed. Uh, they got a really oh, yeah. strict time limit. Yeah, very much so. And there are and five the, uh, portions of each ring stage. Five. Yeah. yeah. And the reason why it's green is because it's kind of like supposed to be some kind of kryptonite mist that kind of cripples Superman from using his full powers. Because, you know, Superman is OP, please nerf. Um, but, uh, but seriously, uh, and then uh, as I was saying before, uh, like the, thir the third, the uh, third, it's kind of like, it's like a tie between... Um, well, it's the same composer for both of these themes, but it's the uh, Captain America march from Captain America: The First Avenger and the uh, the Avengers theme from the uh, First Avengers movie. Compo both composed by the impeccable Alan Silvestri, who also did the music for Back to the Future. So, uh, anyway, due to my poor performance, I might have to cut. Anyway, ahead. Music nerd. <laughs> anyway, due to my awful performance here, I might have to cut ahead to one of the mini games. Your call, man. You're the one making the video. <laughs> yeah, at the, yeah, at this, yeah, the way things are going, it might be necessary. Yeah. Sometimes editing is a necessary evil when it comes to, especially when it comes to this game. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I feel so. Yeah, I'm. I thought I had it, but yeah. <laughs> Once again, we got to cut ahead to the mini game. See you guys in a moment. Yep. Yep. So close and yet so far. So ridiculous. It is. <laughs> I don't know if you want to be quiet while, uh, since you're cutting this footage out, but so I'm just. It's not going to make it in the final cut, so by all means. All right, fair enough. <laughs> and Maggie, if you want to talk, go ahead. All right, fair enough. Who knows? You might use some of my remarks in the finished product. Yeah. So. But, but I do stand by my comment of the you know the of the uh, whole hand waving the whole thing of Superman not being his full powers with the, that kryptonite mist. You know the whole Superman is oblique P. Please nerf. Because some people really complain about Superman being too overpowered, and how could he be a, a team member of a member of a team if he's just so powerful? Which completely misses the point of the character. But then again, a lot of people don't see. This I made mostly it. Mostly hardcore comic news. Yay! It works. Okay, now if you can rush over to the second car and pick it up, I'll start. To, I'll start to show that you can make it float in mid air. Yeah, that's another reason why this game is so beloved, quote unquote. Glitches. Yeah. And and if I and beloved, you mean Stockholm Syndrome? <laughs> yeah. Because it takes a certain level of Stockholm Syndrome to appreciate this game. Yeah, I mean, I like I enjoy ba some bad games, but there are some games such as this that are just so bad that I just. Uh, uh, 
it, it's just certain little things are deal breakers for me. And I mentioned this in a other video I did a, myself a while back, but one of one such game I just completely dislike with every fiber of my being is a RPG for the Nintendo DS called Lunar Dragon Song. I've never heard of that one. And well, it's it was supposed to be like a, a quote unquote prequel of sorts to the Lunar series of RPGs, which the first two are very beloved. They were like uh, like beloved i mean i mean the plots are kind of just like your typical jrpg fair but but despite that they are still you know really beloved because the characters are so just uh, are so fun and interesting and also the localizations were rather uh pop culture reference heavy which is kind of part of their part of their appeal despite the fact that it takes place in the fantasy world but Anyway, and um, it, like like I said, I was saying, Dragon Song was supposed to be like a prequel of sorts to the series, and the uh, and the localization was like a real hack job done by Ubisoft and a few other things. But the deal breaker for me, uh, but you know, the deal breaker, a couple of the deal breakers for me on that was that if you is that um, if you're if, well, running around like uh, like. Running around like you do in a lot of RPGs saps your party's HP, which doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> Not a lot of RPGs and I play. I would have been fine with, and I would have been fine with it if, uh, if it was like that. The walking speed wasn't wasn't slower than molasses, but it is, and sometimes the running speed just makes things a little more easier to navigate. And the other thing that irked me is that if you have, if you when you do battles, you have to choose between getting experience or picking items. You can't get both, which makes zero sense and goes against all point of an RPG. Usually go hand in hand. You pick up items and you can exp and you um, basically farm experience. Exactly, exactly. That's what I was say. Gonna say is that those pretty much go in hand in hand if in a typical RPG. But this isn't a typical okay. RPG. Yeah. Uh, Lunar uh, Dragon Song certainly isn't. No. Can you can you tell we have very little to talk about when it comes to this game because we're just steering <laughs> off topic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Uh, flying through the ring. And it steering off topic. Yes. Yes. I'm at 13 minutes in the recording, and we've still yet to get past the first fucking stupid stage. Yeah, that's a good omen for things to come, folks. Not if you want, if you want a better idea of how bad things are, watch Proton John's LP, folks. Yeah, not to mention um, I'm working with a fairly faulty controller, yeah. which makes it even I worse. Know that yeah, I know that feeling. So my, my sometimes my wireless Logitech controller gets all a little bit wonky when I'm trying to play <laughs> Tales of Symphonia on my Steam account. But, but it hasn't happened lately, thank God. But still. Yeah, but it, yeah. So yeah, when it comes to like, what um, Golden Tales Kiki was just saying. Yeah, it's definitely. What if you want an idea on how that this game really is? Watch Porton Downs LP. Although he has a tendency of breaking pretty much any game he plays. Yeah, but in this case, but in the case of Superman 64 for his LP, he does it deliberately just to show you just how just a, just a slapdash job this game was put together. Even though, funny enough, there was going to be a PlayStation 1 version of this game but was going to correct all these issues and all, maybe try to make the game experience a little more enjoyable, but unfortunately the poor sales of this version necessitated that... Ended up, necessitated, bleh, what, what, what word am I trying to say? That caused this, that version, the PS1 version, to be cancelled. So. And Titus going bankrupt. Oh, what could have been? Sorry? Titus going bankrupt. Uh, oh yeah, and Titus going bankrupt, yeah. Because it's all about the money in the end, sadly. Pretty much, but then again, this is like, then again, we're talking about the gaming industry, so it makes more sense that way. More or less. Yeah, how a game does is usually based on um, sales, 
figures as well as user ratings. Indeed. Although I don't. Uh, although I think that the sales. Uh, I think like maybe like. Although sometimes the user ratings can can re can be just as de uh, can be more detrimental than the sales figures, frankly, because a game could sell really well, but the pe things that people might say about it might be detrimental to whether or not a game gets a sequel or something. Yeah, like that. that like, yeah, that's why I say you know, both. I mean, a good I mean, example. Case in point. A good examples. Uh, I was gonna. Um, <laughs> I was going to give like the recent release ukulele as an example of people complaining that it's too much like a rare collectathon type game when that's exactly what it was marketed as and that's pretty much what Platonic was going for was they wanted a little bit of a simply wanted a fun successor to those types of games that people could enjoy and appreciate because we hadn't had those kind of games in like over two decades. I was going to say you know, like, um, user ratings uh, being more impactful I was going to use Sticker Stars. And there we go. Okay. I've had this problem before with um, the console just kept, it just keeps resetting. Mm, that's not good. Arbitrarily. That's not good. You know what I was trying to say was both of my hands were on the controller and it just kept kept resetting. Yeah, that is, that is unusual. <laughs> Another example of this game being weird, it seems. It wasn't just this game or that problem happened to me. It happened when I was trying to play Perfect Dark on it. it happened when I tried to play um, GoldenEye. I think it might be the console itself. Yeah, well, maybe maybe you could like scrub it down with some alcohol or something. That might help. Yeah, perhaps. <coughs> yeah. There are more problems of this game, but I think you get the gist of it. Yeah, but another point I was going to make is that uh, I made this point on Twitter, actually, where uh, it's just like, some people are complaining the disappointment they felt with ukulele, with, like the whole disappointment of Mighty Number no. 9, and I'm just like, no, 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 there's a clear difference between what the devs of Mighty Number no. 9 were looking for, to, were looking to do, versus what the devs of ukulele were going to do, you know. Ukulele, they were just looking to do a fun little throwback game, the people who may, were making Mighty Number no. 9 were a little too overambitious in doing a multimedia brand. Pure, that's uh, pure and simple. Ah. That's, uh, at least that's how, well, I see. that's how I see it. Well, I think that's a... Uh, that was good. <coughs> that's any kind of things on. Mm -hmm. You know, um... We couldn't do much of it because of a tech issue. Yep. Yeah. And we didn't do much mocking of the game itself, but oh well. <laughs> eh, well, what's to mock about this game that hasn't already been said in some respects? True. But, who knows, maybe we'll come up with something. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, what would you rate this game? Like, in, wait, wait, in, actually, like an actual number rating? Yeah, an, an actual number rating. Oh, that's a tough call because usually I have trouble with that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mercy. Um, uh, like, do you mean like out of 10 or out of 5? Or... Like out of uh, 10. Um. Uh, Damn, uh, I'm not even sure, if, uh, I'm probably being a bit too generous when I say this, probably one out of ten, <laughs> really, it's just, I don't know, it's just, it's just, oh, it's just horrible. Of course, yeah, I could, one, say, yeah, I could even say 0.5 out of ten if I'm feeling really generous. Um, but, well, one, well, in, in that context, one would be really generous. Yeah, I suppose so. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna give it a 0.1 out of 10, and I've actually got another rating to add on to that. Hmm. And this is completely made up, by the way. My secondary rating is a <laughs> out of 10. Just remember to clean up afterwards. <laughs> 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 Sorry about that, old chap. 
<laughs> Sorry, I had to make a there call wasn't for call back. It was worth it. Yeah, there wasn't any real vomit. Yeah. I was just my writing. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> But anyway, thank you for joining me. You're welcome. It was my pleasure, and hopefully I didn't ramble too much. <laughs> <laughs> ramble, ramble. Yeah, fair enough. See you later, folks. See ya. And there is this one glitch that we didn't actually acknowledge. And that was? In the demo. Um, I... He's stuck there. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. Right. He can't get out of that. Awkward. Apparently, that's what's supposed to sell you on playing the game. Apparently not. Do you want me to stop no, the just recording now, by the way? <laughs> All right. Uh, I guess see you next time for our next for another. Let's <laughs> not play. Bye, folks. Bye. Folks. Bye.